I'm Sarah France. I'm a San Diego based wedding and commercial photographer. Um, I am normally in beautiful sunny San Diego but it's a little cloudy today here and we're just enjoying that. I, I've been a photographer for about eight years and really stumbled across it as something that I was good at. Um, I started working for a photographer and just loved what she did and loved her work and she handed me a camera one day and I never looked back. So that was really an incredible time in my life, an incredible discovery and has brought me to the incredible life that I live. And I'm able to travel and do weddings all over the country and all over the world. So what we're going to do today is we are doing a little shoot with Christina. She's actually a past client of mine. I shot her wedding six years ago and yes, she still fits into her wedding dress. Amazing. Anyway, she's a gorgeous model and um, she's agreed to come out with us today. We're at the Hotel Solomar. Um, we're in San Diego and although San Diego is usually gorgeous weather, we um, have a little bit of a crazy weather today. But we're going to deal with that and show you kind of what we do to deal with that. And then we're going to go into Aperture and I'm going to pull the images in, do some post-production on those, show you all my little favorite things about Aperture and some of the really exciting new things about 3.0 and how that's changing our workflow. Um, normally when I'm shooting a wedding, uh, we're starting, no matter what time the wedding starts, we're starting in the, in the morning just kind of getting prepped for the wedding, make sure the gear is all ready to go. Um, checking on the schedule, making sure we know where we're going, all of that. So um, throughout the wedding day, we're there for six to eight hours, sometimes 10, sometimes 12, sometimes three days. And um, really, we are just there to capture. All day long is about capturing. Um, we don't actually start the process of doing downloading and things like that until we come back um, into the studio the next, well, that night. I take the cards out of my Gobi and put them where they need to go um, into the download slot and then my studio manager will come in and actually do the downloading of the images, uh, making sure we got everything. We have a total like download sheet to make sure that we never miss anything. And, um, and then we start going through the images in Apture and, and picking out our favorites and going through the, through the whole process of doing the edit at that time. But that's, you know, a couple days after the shoot. So we don't have time to do any computer work on the day of the shoot other than just picking a few of our favorites out for the slideshow. Okay, here we go. You look awesome. Okay, so now we're back in the studio and we're going to take a look at the shoot that we did yesterday. Now, of course, we're working with a brand new, fresh version of Aperture 3.0. So this is going to be like I do in the studio, but um, with a brand new, fresh library. Um, we're not going to have the infrastructure that we usually have on our old library. So just to give you an idea on our old library, we actually sort by year. Um, we do 2009, 2010, and then within those years, we're doing the different kinds of jobs that we have. So corporate jobs, portraits, weddings, and engagements go into one. And uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Look at this view. I mean, it's just one individual image and you can really see the image. You can hit the Z key and see if you really nailed that focus. Um, you can use your loop, which is the tilde key, to bring up the loop and kind of... So the first thing I want to show you are a few of the images that I wanted to turn black and white and kind of how to locate those and how we sorted them out and we'll take a look at some of the adjustment preset options for black and white. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to this window here to filter down and find the images that I wanted to make black and white. If you remember, we labeled those colored red. So I'm just going to check off label color, make sure that red's highlighted. And just a little side note, you can highlight more than one color. So you could do red and orange, you could do red and no, no color stamp at all. So just make sure you've got the right selection there for exactly what you want. Another really great feature is you can actually make this a new Smart Album. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then I'm going to call the Smart Album Black and White. And we're good to get started on the Black and White. And I'm also going to bump up the contrast a little bit until I get it to where I like it for this image. And that might be enough. Just a couple little adjustments at first, kind of get a base preset going. So let's go up here to presets and I'm going to hit save as preset and then I'm going to name it. So 
let's just name it, uh, let's see, auto exposure plus contrast. Um, of course, you can come up with your own fun names for this. I'm just kind of throwing in a name that I think will let me know what it is, obviously. And then you can also come down here to this wheel and do a new preset group just so you have a group of presets or you can leave it right in this in in this drop down as well. So let's just make this Sarah's presets. So you've got a whole organizational structure here that you can kind of play around with. All right, I'm going to hit OK. And then the next thing I'm going to do is try and apply that preset and see how it looks. I'm drop it down here. You can see I have Sarah's presets and my auto exposure and contrast. It looks beautiful. So I'm going to select that for that image. But don't forget, you can apply it to all the images at once as well, either with a lift and stamp, or you can select all the images, go up to Photos, hit Add Adjustment Preset, and select it from there. So it's a really great way now to apply uh, one adjustment to multiple images. Uh, in the shooting, I was actually talking about how I shoot manually and come in here and am able to do adjustments to multiple images because of the consistency of the image. So presets can be really helpful in that situation. So the new brush tools are non-destructive, which I mentioned, but just to give you a little bit of insight into what non-destructive means is basically Aperture is using this information that you're giving it in the brush tool and you're brushing on different enhancements and stuff, and it's actually not touching the image. So it's working as kind of a, like a layer would in Photoshop and applying an, a information to an image as a layer. And you can always go back and change, remove that layer, and the image is still remains the same underneath. And one kind of cool way to think about this is you can always hit M for master and see really what the raw image still looks like. And when you hit M again, you see the, the actions and applications that are being applied to the image. Um, with all these enhancement bricks and the brushes and all of that. And that's what's happening in Aperture. That's the information that we have. Okay, so let's apply some brushes here. So the first thing I want to do is, as I'm looking at the image, um, I, I want to play around with the saturation in the background, but I don't want it to really do anything with her skin. And we could use the vibrancy tool a little bit, and that works, but I'm going to actually play with brushes with this and really fine tune it and get it in there. So I have this enhancement brick and I'm just gonna drop this down and I'm gonna have it add a new enhancement adjustment underneath it. And you notice that it just drops down a new brick. Now we have two enhancements. And what I wanna do is boost the contrast, boost the saturation, and all I'm looking for is the background at this point.